Welcome to the next video in the Influencer series. The last video on Adelard of Bath noted that he was a big influence on Peter Abelard, the subject of this video. Peter Abelard is a towering figure in the history of free thought, and he is notable for countless reasons, and a number of those issues will be discussed here. Adelard and Abelard, try saying that three times fast, were both outspoken anti-authoritarians whose names are not only similar, but their lifespans also overlapped, living from approximately 1079 to 1142. Their shared attitudes towards authority would create a new atmosphere of critical thinking, which would have far-reaching consequences for the secular world. It was from Abelard's approach to challenging authority from which the disputational scholastic style emerged, and the medieval university owes its pedigree. It was his book, Sic et Non, Yes and No, that would have the biggest influence in this regard, in which Abelard compiled a list of quotes by respected Christian thinkers and revealed how they contradicted each other. As church authority is based on not questioning the revered church fathers and the opinions of contemporary leaders in the church, this was a direct challenge to that structure and the truths they proclaimed, which Russell Riley comments had a considerable effect in waking people from their dogmatic slumbers. However, English philosopher Anthony Kenny notes it was not Abelard's intent to challenge authority by aligning the contradictions, but to generate critical thinking and discussion about the various topics of each point of divergence. This disputational method was adopted for the scholastic system, and why Abelard is credited with being the man who laid the foundation for the adversarial style of medieval universities. Also, in Dialogue of a Philosopher with a Jew and a Christian, Abelard comments on accepting anything on blind faith, particularly of the religion one inherits from family and culture. Abelard also coined the term theology in relation to the systematic approach to Christian studies for the title of his work, Theologia Christiana, and was one of the major contributors to the ideas which led to the development of limbo, a concept that emerged during the 12th and 13th centuries as a way of circumventing Augustine's foolish assertion that unbaptized babies would be condemned to hell in his rationalizations for original sin. Unfortunately, Augustine's idiotic doctrine won out over saner minds, like Julian of Eclanum, and was perpetuated for over 1,500 years, needlessly tormenting many Catholic parents who had already suffered the loss of a baby. Related to his rejection of the concept of original sin was Abelard's open-mindedness about human sexuality not shared by the majority of Catholics, not surprising given his notorious love affair with Heloise. The affair with Heloise is a topic all by itself, and I may do a future video on it. Brundage notes he was almost alone, except for a few others at the school of Leon, in refuting the belief that sex is inherently sinful by putting forth that it is natural and useful. Adelard of Bath had also taught at Leon, but appears to have left on his seven years of travel before Abelard arrived there in 1113 to study briefly. Another of Abelard's contributions to the study of logic was in dealing with the problem of universals. As everything must be defined through words, a universal is some property that must be shared by all members that fall within the assigned definition. For example, Plato's definition of man as a featherless biped was easily refuted by Diogenes plucking a chicken and calling it man, amply demonstrating the ease with which words can be manipulated. Abelard's solution is known as conceptualism, in which he showed that language was insufficient for adequately defining the truth of things. Consider also that while Abelard was a peripatetic, a follower of Aristotle, the only works he had available to him were the two that had survived from the early 500s, Categories and On Interpretation. The new translations of Aristotle's works from Spain did not start arriving until after his death, which Kenny notes put Abelard at a disadvantage to later scholars who had that access, and that in some ways Abelard was a superior logician to Aristotle. In the decades following the deaths of Abelard and Adelard, a major shift was underway. The two radical contemporaries with their open questioning of authority had opened the floodgates. The fallacy of non-critical appeals to authority had led to intellectual stagnation in Europe. This new atmosphere and approach to learning would have long-term implications, as people began thinking in new ways about how and why nature functions, which ultimately led directly to the modern secular world. 
Greg Dawes, a professor of religion and philosophy and a former Catholic priest, writes that conditions were ripe for a scientific revolution by the 12th century, given two precursor conditions that had lain dormant since the world-denying stance of Augustine, a renewed interest in the natural world and the new critical attitude to authority. Parallel to the new attitude was the creation of the first medieval universities, a transition from the original cathedral schools into chartered institutions in the last half of the 12th and early 13th centuries. The universities emerged with the arrival of translations from Toledo starting near the end of the 12th century, and in the second episode of the documentary, The Day the Universe Changed, the host James Burke notes this was an event which blew everything apart. If you like my content, please like and subscribe to get notified of new videos. Please also consider supporting my work by becoming a Patreon sponsor. You can also find me on the following platforms.